Hello everybody, my name is Crystal and it's 10 o'clock in the morning and I'm taking my dog Max for a walk around the Rochester Riverside field. I live by myself, I'm quite happy to do so. Um, I am in Great Britain, this is United Kingdom, Rochester, Medway, the United Kingdom, UK. Good morning. Bit of a chilly start to the morning and uh, yeah we're just casually taking Max for a walk on a Saturday morning. Max is a small chihuahua so we are wary of um, bigger dogs but as you know chihuahuas they're pretty able to look after themselves so <laughs> as in if some another dog comes over to attack them chihuahuas are, are quite capable of fighting back <laughs> very yappy loud dogs chihuahuas are very, they can be very noisy. In fact, I keep Max under control very well. <laughs> so, I have made myself a cup of coffee. I've been listening to LBC Radio. Very nice accent one of the women had on there. Um, very, very nice accent. There are dogs all over the field this morning. Big dogs. <laughs> So I'm just going to be me, which is walking around the field minding my own business. I don't want another dog jumping on me. I don't want to communicate with strangers. So let's see what happens this morning. My son has gone off to the USA. I can look after myself. Uh, my mum is... Well, she's 78, she lives on her, on her own, so I should be going up to see my mum uh, next week sometime. She said, don't go up Monday because her water's being cut off. Some water work happening up in Chatham. So... I shall not go up there Monday. I've told my mum, you know, fill plastic bottles up. Fill plastic bottles up. Uh, and uh, she's got, they're, they're all, all down the road uh, having their water switched off all day. It's not just my mum. Dad died what, three years ago. Um, that's it. When you are with a partner and they pass on and you're left on your own, it can be devastating for the other partner, can't it? So, I don't have window cleaners. I clean my own windows. The window cleaner was out this morning, washing people's windows. It's chilly. It's quite chilly today. I've got orange juice in my pocket. They were talking about healthy food on the radio. You know, and how eating healthy is expensive. This is why people are eating junk food because it's cheaper, which is true. Um, one alarming fact that ca that uh, was brought up was that school kids are not maintaining hygiene. 
so school kids with bad hygiene going to school smelling sounds like we're going backwards in time doesn't sound like 2024 it sounds like yeah <laughs> I don't know what's happening with this world right now. My son is away for a month. Four weeks. Um, I don't live with my son, so it's not a problem. It's not a problem. I don't live with him anyway. And I'm, uh, I should go up to see my mum and I'll, I'll ring her on Monday if I'm not keeping in touch with her throughout the weekend anyway. Because <laughs> it's a bit harsh, isn't it, having your water off all day when you're elderly and all my mum like is she makes cups of tea. <laughs> so she kind of, you know... <laughs> <laughs> so it's not me on Monday with my water supply cut off it's my elderly mum <laughs> I know she said come up another day she said don't come up Monday <laughs> so There's probably workmen all up the road or something. <laughs> Said we're just going for a walk on a Saturday morning. It's crispy and cold. <laughs> and I don't want to get up in the mornings. No, I don't. <laughs> Let me get my electric and gas sorted out and I'll be fine. But uh, when you get up in the morning, it's freezing. <laughs> so, I'm quite pleased with my son. I'm quite pleased for him very pleased for him I am but uh, you won't get me going out of the United Kingdom anyway I don't feel safe <laughs> travelling and I certainly wouldn't be going on an aeroplane I think he did the right thing travelling yesterday. There's uh, troubles like queues in that airports over the weekend. <laughs> no, I was just sat down, about ready to go out last night. And my son said, right, I've left London. I went, have a nice time. And uh, there you are. Saturday. Saturday. I, the reason I say that I'm in Rochester, United Kingdom, because there is a Rochester in America. There's a Rochester in the USA. Let's just uh, get off this field. I have been through hell on earth and back. So it is possible to get through things and keep standing. Like everybody else, I get days when I don't want to get out of bed. I just don't want to do anything.
that someone's got an answer for what they've done. They can't just keep hiding it under the carpet. It's not fair. <laughs> if I did something bad, I'd go to prison for it. So should these criminals. <laughs> these crooks. I know what they've done and it sounds crazy so until I've got absolute 100% cast iron proof I'm not going to voice my opinion on what I think has been going on. <laughs> All I'm saying is I've been locked up in a police cell many years ago now and I wasn't the villain. I am not receiving proper medical care and I'm not the only one going through this either. And, um, I look after myself. not hungry I've got food in the fridge I'm an older woman now this started when I was 34 believe it or not I am it's 20 years on Started when I was around in my thirties. <laughs> so you can imagine how much money they've been making for the past twenty years. Just the riverside. They need to find these people that came out to me and who sent them? The men. Who sent them? Who sent these men out to safe, safe houses? I have been abused in uh, women's refuges and safe houses. And so I'm, you know, someone needs to find out where these men came from if they're still alive. I've got to remember, it's 20 years ago now. And their sense of humour. Uh, one of my housing workers at um, one of my addresses was called Mark Phillips and remember that Princess Anne's husband is called was called M Captain Mark Phillips and this Mark Phil Phillips he was a black coloured man he kept knocking on my door for rent when I had a small baby and at one point I didn't owe any rent and he kept banging on the door So we have a person with a very, very funny sense of humour, the black Mark Phillips. <laughs> and it's carried on to this day. <laughs> now, of course, they've been getting away with mixing me up with my mother and telling everybody I'm crazy. 
and they can't do it anymore. Hence, there's been no one in my flat for eight years. I haven't had a relationship for eight years. They can't do it anymore, right? There's a train going through the station. If you invite someone into your flat, they're going to turn around and say, well, you invited them into your flat, you know, it's your fault. That's what I've been told by police. I've been told by police the case is over two years old. It's, you can't report it now. That's bullshit. So we know the police are lied. Whether they've been real police or not, they've told an incredible amount of lies and bullshit. Um... So, I don't invite people into my flat. When someone knocks on my door, I want their ID. I want, I want the proper ID as well, not fake ID. <laughs> they did that to me in Gloucestershire, pretending to be the social services with their fake badges, which were printed off someone's computer. Mixing me up with my mother to hide what they're doing. And it's not very nice calling someone that suffers from schizophrenia a schizo. And my mother, Jennifer, not me, has, was diagnosed with schizophrenia. And I believe she was diagnosed with that so my dad could continue to abuse me. And he did. My mum tried to uh, run away from my dad, get away from him, but they, she keeps saying that they wouldn't let her leave him. And he continues to, to abuse me. So beware of trolls saying people are a mad, mad and schizo. That, it, that, won't, that won't rush anymore. Keep saying people are mad when they're saying things. I'd rather be called that than be dead because someone's killed me, you know, through abuse. I don't let anyone in my flat anymore. And that last, the last person to try it on was that Charlie. And who was he working for next door to the Freemasons? Next door to the Freemasons. <laughs> they all keep it within the Freemason family, don't they, what they're doing? <laughs> yes, there is a Freemasons in Rochester. There is a Freemason in Chatham. And my granddad was a member of the Freemasons, my grandfather. And if people think you're mad, they don't go near you, so good. <laughs> I don't want anyone near me after what I've been through. I had all this at school, victimised and bullied at school for absolutely no reason at all. First day of secondary school. And who chose my secondary school? My dad did. My father chose my secondary school. My mum wasn't allowed to do anything because he controlled us both. And then he chose all my lessons and I failed them all because I didn't want to learn what he, he wanted me to learn. I didn't want to learn it. 
tired of people controlling me and forcing me to do what they want. I'm not having it. I ain't having it. <laughs> so the only choice they have got is to leave me alone. Completely. And they've done it to themselves by forcing me to do things I don't want to do. And you know, years of being told that you 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 stink, you you're poo, laughing at my teeth. Look at the state of this country. Loads of people have got bad teeth. Loads of people stink and unhygienic. That's what you get for picking on somebody, right? They wanted me in that little bub bubble, calling me all, all these names, thinking that I was the only one that had, you know, crooked teeth. I was the only one. And it's not the case, is it? Loads of people are going through the same thing. Now I'm going to get on and, and go home. And these big dogs have gone, thank goodness. Police have done nothing. They've done nothing to protect me. They don't come out. I look after myself. Oh, I can't look after myself. What am I doing now? Looking after myself. Bullshit. See you later.